and joy and solidarity. From the world stage to our living room, the nation's first black first lady is coming through just for us. With her new bestseller, The Light We Carry, overcoming in uncertain times, topping the charts, she reserves some family time to talk, laugh, cry, and comfort us. Our visit hits different. You being a brown skin girl in the White House. Ours is up close and personal. Now I'm gonna cry. Ours is revolt times Michelle Obama. The unfiltered, uncut, and completely unapologetic. My kids tell me, Mama, you don't have a filter anymore. Cross-generational conversation. Because you don't have to have one. This is an extraordinary, amazing group of women. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hey. I just want to say, for, you know, at the beginning, I just want to say I would love to just of all, us to all hang out in, in real in life. Real life. Oh, we should do this again. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we got to do this again. I was saying backstage, I was like, I would like to hang out with, with this With a little crew. glass yes. of something, that would help. A I glass of it. something. A glass of something. Whatever <laughs> the we something totally is, everybody has. Whatever. Great. We are gathered here today. <laughs> to celebrate and to uh, kind of reflect on the offering that is the light we carry. Yay! Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! I wrote a book. <laughs> you wrote a, another, another book. book. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. It's... And another one. And another one. <laughs> another another best-selling book. What does this period feel like to you when you put this out in the world because it's so personal and intimate mm. and then everyone reads it and it is terrifying yeah you know and and that's I, I write about fear a lot mm -hmm. and I talk about what it was like to put out bef becoming anything that is you your music your art your you know there is a level of oh my god I'm about to put this out to the world it is all me yes. is it right yeah. uh, does it make sense are people gonna understand it? I mean, we all go through that, yes. you know? I think there are a lot of young people who look at famous people who do things and think that we don't experience those doubts, but before I walk out on stage to give a speech, before I put something important out into the world, I am nervous. <laughs> I am like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe yeah. I said too much. So it's, I, you know, I just learned to ride that wave. Yeah. Because what I've learned is that what's on the other side of that wave, as we talk about fear, oftentimes is growth mm -hmm. and something good and useful. And it's worth the, it's worth the risk. Yeah. It's worth the ride. We were in, uh, we were back in the room earlier today in the hallway with Miss Tina and, and Kelly and I. We were talking about, because vulnerability is a big theme in the book. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes it's easy to be vulnerable about something that, from our past. Oh, when I was 20, mm -hmm. I went through, or 18, I went yeah. through. It's a you're able to tell these stories, but in real time, mm -hmm. things that are pretty recent. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you talk about being depressed after COVID, yeah. and yeah. That's, pretty, that's a pretty current kind of recent feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wonder from everyone, because Kelly and I have talked about this, mm -hmm. that you recently like, had to pull over to the side of the road because you were having anxiety. Yes. In real time. Yes. Something you still deal with. Yes. What are some of the struggles that we all kind of, I don't know, are battling now that, are, that we're okay being vulnerable about? Say where to begin. You said you're more happy, you're, you're, you're more comfortable being vulnerable now, yes. vulnerable now in life. I think it's something about turning 60 mm -hmm. that you're not so guarded and so protective of everything that it's a big secret. And now I'm just really comfortable, even with the things that I might have had shame about when I was younger. Like, I mean, I can talk so freely about growing up really poor now. But when I was younger, I didn't necessarily want everybody to know that that was, you know, my, uh, how I grew up. And so now I just feel free to be myself, mm -hmm. genuinely myself, and I'm not as concerned about people liking me as much. Mm -hmm. So it's something about turning 60. It's something about getting older in general yeah. that you, like, you eventually start caring less. Yes, <laughs> well, and my kids tell me, they're like, Mama, you don't have a filter anymore. I'm like, it's like, because you don't have a filter. to have one. <laughs> it's like, you don't what have to have, because you don't have to have one. 
anymore. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's why I say, you know, youth is wonderful, but that's really all you have is youth. That's right. You know, life does get better every decade, which is, you know, when I talk to young people who are agonizing about not knowing themselves or feeling uncertain in their 20s and 30s, it's like, give it time. You will settle into yourself. You will, you, you will gain, and when I say at the beginning of the book, the tools that you learn over time, I, I warn young people, be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff you won't know, you cannot know until you're in your 50s and 60s, but just be patient through the and process. And be nice to yourself. You said something in your book about like, um, you said we are whole people with like mm -hmm. whole situations and whole lives, yeah. you know, and um, I, I had a, a tough year um, and I knew it was because of growth where I just felt like I was so focused on trying to do the right thing that I got lost and, and I didn't listen to how I actually feel mm -hmm. and like the, the yeses that should have been no's or... Yeah you know, listening to everybody else's voice and what they think as opposed to what I think feels yeah, right. And it's yeah. that battle and it's that balance that you talk about mm -hmm. of just like knowing when to trust yourself. Things are gonna be trial and error, practicing, yeah. you know, in life. And yeah. that's just, you, you should allow yourself that, right? Especially when you're in your 20s. And oh my I'm, gosh, I'm in yeah. the middle, I'm in the thick of it right now. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to be vulnerable, <laughs> especially being, you know, on a platform and people looking at you and feeling that pressure and yeah. that responsibility. But you take it on because it's, it's for you, you can handle it, you know? Mm -hmm. And like you said, giving yourself that grace. Well, the, one of the main conversations I'm having with my eldest is learning, her practicing setting her boundaries. Mm -hmm you know, the no's in life. And you don't know that right away. You, is First of all, you just need to recognize that you have to have boundaries. Mm -hmm. That I it's, love oh, boundaries, I'm the queen. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Sometimes too many boundaries. But you don't, but when you're in your 20s, you feel like you should say yes to every opportunity. Yeah. You, you second guess everything. You think somebody else's judgment is better than yours. You don't have, you're developing your gut Right, mm -hmm. and you just don't. You're you're a baby in learning your gut right now, yeah. and that's okay. But what becomes challenging is you're you got a big career. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing outsized things in your twenties, and the mistakes may feel bigger than they are mm -hmm. because everybody's watching them. But you still need to go through that process. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to be kind to yourself through that process. And kind of enjoy the ride, too. Don't you feel like that? Because yeah. you may p spend a whole bunch of time building up walls and building up your boundaries. And then you may get to another phase in your life, 40s, 50s, whenever it is, where you go, I'm ready to put some of these walls back down because it doesn't serve yeah. you anymore. You don't yeah. need them anymore. You care less about what people say. So it's a it's the constant evolution of it all. Yeah. Um, so when you, this pressure that we put on ourselves when we're in our twenties, right? You probably do this it, all the time. How old are you? are in twenties, right? Yeah, you're I'm maybe 20, 20, 20. You're still twenties. Yeah, twenties. That's yeah, twenty. Yeah, yeah, twenties. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In your 20s, I don't yes, know. I'm in my still 20s, in my 20s, <laughs> in my 20s I, I thought no I had to have I'm it all. No I had to have it all together. I thought in my 20s, I thought I had to find the right man. I had to have the, my job. Mm -hmm. The right. right. I, I feel know. like I I didn't recognize that until I noticed how many eyes were on me, mm -hmm. because I remember just being free and like you know being on social media and stuff, and not even realizing that I had a platform yet yeah. until like you know, people start talking about me in the news and stuff like that, and that always scared me. And like people coming up to me always made me nervous. And so I kind of, in that sense, put a guard up. And like, when people would come up to me or yell my name, I would be like, uh, not know what to do or like turn around and walk away. And um, I, I realized like it was creating bad experiences with people who were trying to show me love in their own way that I wasn't receiving. And so um, it, I had to open up in like that vulnerability self sense within myself to be like, you know what? Why am I closing off? It is okay to like receive love. It is okay to um, be nervous and even be honest about it yeah. and tell people if I feel nervous. And when I started doing that and opening up about being like scared, nervous or you know, being vulnerable, I think it helps me more in life. It takes well, the power away. Just explaining that emotion, right? 
um, you give that vulnerability gives people a broader sense of the challenges mm -hmm, you face. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that I had to learn to do, especially when I was with my family, people would come up, show that love, you know, they want a picture or an autograph, mm -hmm. and instead of being upset by it, I would just explain, look, you can stand here, we can have a conversation all day, but the minute you put out, pull out a phone or ask me to do a thing, you've turned it from a regular interaction into a thing. Mm. <laughs> but when you explain that to people, they're like, right. I get it. Yeah. But you can know? you explain that to everyone? Right. Well, it's you know, if I'm, on a, if I'm first lady and I'm on a soccer field, mm. and I, I wanna be at soccer with my kids because it was important to be at their game or their this or their that, if I, I, I wouldn't trade off being there, but I had to teach people mm. how to treat me in this space, mm. you know? That's and great. and they're looking for that, right? Yes. It's like, I'm gonna be out on the soccer field all day and I will talk to you like a regular mother, bring your kid over, because we're all talking on the field, but the minute you turn it into a thing, we have to stop it. I don't know that I could have lived your life and you wouldn't have seen me angry. Or, yeah. or you wouldn't have seen me snap at somebody and say, <laughs> that's not all, you know, because people, not everyone is as gracious as you would like them to be or understanding but or that's get the, the message. But that's the thing about vulnerability. You know, instead of reacting with anger by saying, this is, I'm going to share with you this thing I'm feeling, mm. right. which is when you interrupt me in a place where I'm being a, a mother, space. Yeah. then that turns it into something else. People get it, you know, and that's the thing about being vulnerable. We think that it makes us more out there, mm -hmm. but really, if we give people credit for understanding that situation, they respond. They do. Yeah, yeah. I, at least I've learned that they do. So the first reaction for me is not rejection, but it's, let me explain this to you. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how this is going to work. Love you, but don't do this. We can do this. You know, um, so, you know, that would be a, a thing to remember. Yeah, I'm talking I, to my I kids about that I've been trying sometimes. This is one I of think the with time we, and communication. We appreciate so much about you. Yeah. Because you, you, uh, you uh, have been an example of that for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When we're in these moments. Yeah. When you're in this 100%. moment where you want to say, everybody leave me alone, you think, <laughs> what would Michelle do? What would Michelle do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a bracelet that says that. <laughs> Do you do I that? Did, I did that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even say, just saying yeah. that. I had a WWMD moment <laughs> where Sharon, I was Sharon. like, what would Mrs. Obama do? Because I, I feel like, just like you just stated, there's so many moments where people, I mean, it's, it's not even just like mm -hmm. a, 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 it's not a celebrity thing. It's just a creating a respectful space yeah. thing. And whether yeah. that's with family or friends or business or whatever, mm -hmm. you're always so scared. I know at least my, I can say I'm usually nervous about how is the other person going to react to my boundary. Yeah. And then I had to learn that ain't my business. Right. How you react is not my you're business. You're getting better at not being a people you're getting better at it, right? <laughs> and, yeah, you're getting well, really and, and that may be part of it that their reaction still bothers you. Yeah, you yeah. know, and mm -hmm. so you've got to get to the point, and this is the part of the book where we talk about the mask, the boundaries, the protecting our armor, mm -hmm. you know, protecting. Mm -hmm. Once we get to know ourselves and know our light, it's not just to be out there. You, you, you have to create some protection for it because people will eat your light up, mm -hmm. you know. They will wear it down if you let it, and it's not even intentional. No. You know, it's just because people are hungry for something. Mm -hmm. And I try to keep that in mind. What's going on with you? If you've reacted negatively to me, yeah. I'm not taking that in because I know I didn't do anything. Right. And the older you get, you realize, hey, it really ain't me. <laughs> so what happened to you today? Right, yeah. right. You know, right. Um, but it is important to protect. You do, you have a right, particularly as you're young, as we have learned, you have a right to your boundaries. Yeah. People yeah. don't have to like it, yeah. you know, but then you have to get over wanting them to like your boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. You you set them and move on. Now, when I'm in that situation where they get a little too, I just, then I leave. Right. Okay. Then yeah. the situation yeah. is over. Yeah, I think there's something really true to what Ms. Tina was saying also about uh, once you have your, you've done that in your life and you've created these spaces and your boundaries and you know what you're willing to do and not, it's easier to say, but this type of thing hurts my feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're protected in your own way from your own vulnerability. Like if you're not comfortable with your boundaries and then you're vulnerable, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
because you don't know how somebody could take advantage mm -hmm. of it, right? Yeah. We only see like everyone's highlight reel, yes. you know, in social right. media and yeah. their life, and or, you, or we meet people quickly and we're like, oh, how are you? Yeah. I'm great. Yeah. Everything's great. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. But we don't sh we don't say. I'm, ha I'm having a hard day today. Because you don't want I had throw to throw that on nobody. Right. Right. I, I'm literally thinking, I don't want to put that on nobody today. And I will probably, I know for me, I will probably like carry all of that. And then if I don't say something or even like have a moment to call you or the girls or my friends or whatever, it blows out, mm -hmm. it comes out on the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Or it comes mm -hmm. out in my marriage or it comes mm -hmm. out on my kids and I'm like, oh my God, I have to take, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I have to talk about it or cry it out on the side of the road or have a, a real quick chat to myself like, well, why you say that like that to mm -hmm. that person? You know, I have to check myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally like good with being honest with myself, even when I see that part that I don't like, that I'm still working on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. a tough thing. Yeah. But I liked what you said about the boundaries and the vulnerability. It's not a celebrity thing. Mm -mm. It's not a, it's in so many different ways. And on the other side of it, you know, when you talk about protecting, mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've experienced, because um, I've been pretty protected, you know, you, my whole life. You came life. out, you didn't even want people to see your exactly, face. Exactly, right. <laughs> exactly. Well, first of all, let me say that's the smartest thing. <laughs> I'm like, yes, thank you. yes to not rushing out into that, yeah. first of all. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I think that started to turn into people around me, um, like amplifying that guardedness. Mm. And I feel like I haven't been able to connect to people mm. and do this. And that's even hard for me to say. Mm -hmm. And I had a year where I was saying, like, I don't know if I like the woman that I'm becoming. Mm. And that's a really hard thing to face and a hard thing to say. And I realized it's because everybody kind of had their, yeah, you know, yeah. thing around me, which I want to say is, is good intent, but um, I needed to out, have that outreach yeah. to people and have conversations yeah. like this. And I love that in your mm. book, you talked about a community mm. of people not doing things alone. That's Cause right. I felt like I always had to do things alone or I had to hold everything in mm -hmm. and not say how I feel. And, being vulnerable is what got me here in the first place. Absolutely. So I'm having to relearn how to um, be real with myself and the people around me mm -hmm. and, and use my tools and, yeah. and be able yeah. to, to well, not be afraid to say, hey, Angie, because we know each other. Mm -hmm. How did you handle this situation? Or am I tripping? You know, or, hey, how did you experience this? Like, I'm so happy to hear you say, like, I get nervous when people come up to me because I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that was okay. I remember going to the Oscars one year, mm -hmm. and it was so many people, and I was going through my own growth and my own changes and everything and learning who I was. I was so uncomfortable in this room, mm -hmm. and I kept measuring myself up to other people, oh, that's and that's so insane because yeah. it's like, why ain't I just, why didn't I? Why ain't I? I'm country. Mm -hmm. Why ain't I just pat myself on the back for my accomplishments yeah. and yeah. put that forth and just be proud of like that? You deserve I, to like, be yeah, there. like I, yeah. I kept measuring, and I, as a, I don't care, like I said, if you're the industry or not, you're a young person, mm -hmm. you're measuring yourself up and to see like where you should be in this part of your life or whatever. Yeah. Like when we remove that, it's so much more freedom. Comfortable. And there, comfortable. There is, Free. There's so much in life that we have to practice. Yeah. You know, you have to practice building and being in community mm -hmm. no matter where you are because those habits are important and that support is necessary. And sometimes when you're in the public eye or shy or whatever, mm -hmm. holding yourself in where you are now you're out of the practice of community. Mm -hmm. And so now that you can identify it, which is key, because you can say that and you said it out loud, yeah. you cannot practice just being an island to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but question, but isn't there a part of you that wants to be a trusted friend too? Or do you no. just put yourself in the parent box? No. Okay. Caring for your kids and watching them grow is one of the most rewarding endeavors on earth. And at the same time, it can drive you nuts. What are some of the struggles that we all kind of, I don't know, are battling now that are that we're okay being vulnerable about? Oh man. I say where to begin. I know, right? <laughs> right. right. For me, I'd say motherhood. It's that push and pull of how do I protect my child? Yeah. And we feel this until they are 
uh, Absolutely. forever, right? But how do I how do I let them go so that they can have these experiences, get bumped in the head, walk off the cliff, walk into a wall? That, this so is hard. the hardest part so hard. about it's parenting, parenting yes. is letting them grow up and make mistakes and oh. be out there. It is the it it is people say it's your heart out on your shoulder in the rain. Why does nobody wet. tell you that in advance? I'm telling people now. <laughs> Why does no d- Listen, rushing into parenting? <laughs> it is this stuff happens. When we were in the White House with my girls, they could have been as sheltered and protected as anybody, but I had to think about what's gonna happen when this eight years is over. Mm-hmm. Who how are they gonna exist in the world? So I have to get them out of this comfort zone now. Mm. I have to make sure that they are living, even in their abnormal world, they have to learn how to make friends. They have to learn how to be comfortable at a sleepover. They have to go to the prom. They have to get a driver's license. They have to to get on a bus. They have to go through an airport by themselves. They have to make their own friends. So weird to watch somebody in public, but you feel like you've known them, I feel like I know that we all do feel like we've known them. You, I mean, you're a mom of kids we know. (laughs) (laughs) What is that like? To, To make sure that there's a balance so that they don't feel that they're entitled to things because I remember, you know, stories about that because of the (laughs) position that they're in, that they're entitled and that someone should just give them something because, uh, I mean, I remember Beyonce being in uh, the group at first and someone coming in that was, she brought the, the other girl in and the girl was older, like stronger and had a better voice at the time than her. But she had not been... Not possible, not possible. No, yeah, because she was much older and stronger. And her coming home and saying, that's not fair because I brought her there and, you know, and they're not even telling me thank you. And, and now she's just singing all the lead. And I'm like, you know what I would do? I would go get in those voice lessons and I just mm-hmm. work twice as hard because the world ain't fair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was a really tough oh, lesson for that say age. Say that please one more time. Oh, yeah. And she was like, I Life hate you. Life ain't fair. It ain't yeah, fair. she was mad. But she said, I hate you? Yo, oh, she said, I hate you. you well, know, that's kids, the first that's of many, the fir- I hate oh, you. What do you mean? Like, she said, I hate you? You're not my best friend, <laughs> and I hate you. Um, I just girl, would never, I'd be boys. like, I would always be like, go in your room and say that. Right. Because I don't, don't want to hear that. Yeah, but you can feel it, but, you know. But you know it's not real. It's just like, saying to me, you know, when your kids say, you are not my best friend. friend. Yeah. Well, guess what? I don't want to be your best friend. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the girls I'm always said, kid. don't you hate when mom says, I'm not one of your little friends? Right, I'm not. <laughs> be like, I didn't, I got friends. I don't need you to like me. That's the last right. thing I need is one more friend. But question, but isn't there a part of you that wants to be a trusted friend too, or do you no. just put yourself in the parent box? No. no. Okay. No, I'm the no parent. that's a you no. You do as I say. This darn this gentle parenting, then, Mrs. Yeah. Obama. <laughs> but Kelly, this is the thing. It's like once you decide you want your child to be your friend, now you're worried about them liking you. That's right. And there's so much of parenting that has nothing to do with them liking you. So much of what you're going to have to teach them is counter to what they want. That's right. Mm. You know, what yes. you with a friend, you want them happy all the time. Yes. Your kids have to learn how to live in their unhappiness. They have to learn how to live with unfairness. Mm. And they have to learn it in their house. They can't, their first bout of unfairness can't be at school, mm. you know, or when they're 30. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, you right. want them to understand, yeah, yeah you, you're not like equal. you all the time. You Kelly. and your sister. Yeah. Stop I'm happy with her. Kids. I'm not. Right, stop. <laughs> you can't people please. And you can be <laughs> friends. I'm friends with you guys now. Yes. But exactly. I, I love my kids now. I had now. to tell you, you got to be home by uh, 7 o'clock. We're or, not friends. You know. Like, she bye. dropped me off in front of the high school, remember? Yes. LMR. That was the hardest thing. And I was like, I don't want to go. The first time she let me off the hook, and then she was like, you got to get out of the car. You got to go. And and I never said, seen a yard look like it was like it was a whole so football big. field yes, long. It was. it was massive and the walk was so hard. It was so long and she kept turning around looking at me and I'm like <laughs> I feel like such a creep. Like I want to run up and walk her up to the door. That's what your friend would have done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but, that's right. That's what, what right. you friend, but I was like, you she got to be yeah. tough. What you go. needed was the feeling that you could do it because however bad it was, didn't you feel a sense of 
of competence yes. that you did yes. do it. Yes. And when we stop our kids from feeling, this is what I write, yeah. when we, we, we stop our fit, kids from feeling fear, yeah. we so stop them from feeling competent too. Mm, that's so true. And competence is critical in your child. Teaching them that they are independent. They can wake themselves up. Yeah. They can put on their own clothes. Mm -hmm. It starts so early. They can sleep through the night mm -hmm. on their own without me being cuddled up. Right. All of that is getting them You're ready for... You're empowering them. You're empowering exactly. Your kids for life. We cannot always protect our kids from that experience. And that was something, you know, I wrote, wrote about this in the book, my, my mother making us at a very early age face our fears, sending me to school at kindergarten to walk by myself, mm -hmm. right? Walked around the block. I thought she was crazy. I was like, you want me to <laughs> go out there? You know, but I talk about how she, she let me go to show me that I could do it, yeah. right. to show me that she had faith in me. And wow. there, there's, a, there's a competence that kids need to feel independent. Mm -hmm. And you're still practicing that competence mm -hmm. because you need to know that you can be out in the world getting hurt, somebody insulting you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to get, you gotta learn how to get over that too. Yeah. Being disappointed, having somebody, you know, greet you with a, you know, unglad eye. You gotta <laughs> practice all of that, even okay. given who yeah. you are. Yeah. You gotta have all those tools and the only way you have them is to be out there doing it. Mm -hmm just the sheer act of him getting up every day and going to work mm -hmm. was a statement that, ugh, now I'm gonna cry. I am, after all, the product of my own parents and grandparents, which is to say, I'm not a leaper or a flyer. Your mom is, is the true. Yeah. She's the, oh, she is she's the, the true OG. She's, the true she's a mess. Yeah. She is. She was beyond her years as a parent, which is why I have a whole chapter dedicated to just sharing some of that little wisdom yeah. that is so important for all parents to understand. Because my parents weren't wealthy, mm -hmm. they weren't connected, they had their faults, but Challenges. their common sense wisdom was enough to create two giants, me and my brother, and a legacy of more. So when I tell parents, it's not what you can offer, mm -hmm. it's what you can offer, it's your mind, it's the thoughtfulness of your parenting, it's the deliberateness of it, which is why I think parenting is one of the most awesome responsibilities that we have. It is. You know, and, and, and taking it seriously and thinking about, like you think about your husband, why, why am I upset? What is this going to do to this child that I'm raising, this yeah. opinion of mine, yeah. this discipline? Who am I trying to get that kid to be? Yes. Not the baby I have, but who do I want that adult to be? Mm -hmm. be? My parents had that, that common sense in them. Mm. They were always thinking about who they wanted us to be, not for themselves, not for their own egos, but who they wanted us to be in the world. And I try to do that as well. And we don't spend enough wow. time as parents talking about that. But I also, the, sometimes I, I always think, sometimes if I forget to tell my kids something, I have two sons, two mm -hmm. teenage boys, two very handsome teenage mm -hmm. boys. But sometimes I give myself grace if I forget to say something or I don't feel like I taught the lesson right. right. I do have comfort in knowing that sometimes it's um, what they see also yes. is a thing. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, what they see is equally as important as the things we tell them and the things we, so just working on myself and being the best version of myself, to me, I feel, I give myself enough grace to know that if nothing else, mm -hmm. if I could just be the best version of myself, not that that's all I do as a parent, but if nothing else, that if is I can so get important. that right, then I feel like the kids, and then, and that brings me to like, in the book, you talk about you know, your father struggling with MS, how that was great, it affected you. It was like your first time re feeling different, mm -hmm. going to school and feeling different yeah. and how much. So that wasn't something he was, he was vocally teaching you. But like you said, he, what he demonstrated in the act of getting up every day, mm -hmm. um, it, how to turn your challenges into your superpower, mm -hmm. right? You know, when I think about what my dad as a black man with MS could have done, he could have never worked a day in his life. He could have collected social, you know, benefits. He could have succumbed to his, his disease and been depressed about it. 
but he didn't, mm -hmm. you know. He was never, he never felt sorry for himself. He never expected others to do for him. Um, and just, just the sheer act of him getting up every day and going to work mm -hmm. was a statement that, ugh, now I'm gonna cry, is, stays with me every day of my life. Mm -hmm. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about the lessons he taught us. Yeah and how he is not here to see any of it. And so much of it is because of him. That is the power of what a working class black man can do in the world, which is why I don't want any black man out here to think that they don't have something to offer their kids. That's right. Ugh. What my dad did was beyond money, title, influence, nothing. I would trade it all for what my father provided us in that little bitty apartment on 74th and Euclid. So, wow. sorry about that. No, please, please don't apologize. Please don't apologize. <laughs> Kelly and I just had a very long talk about our dads because mm -hmm. she just reconnected with hers. Mm -hmm. I found out mine was alive. I thought he was dead. He wasn't, he's not. Mm -hmm. So even though he wasn't in my life, I can, I can, I can see the impact. Yeah. And I chose to make it in a good way for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I have empathy for people because I think he had his struggles and mm -hmm. I kind of give him that grace and just, okay, you're not in my life. But from that was what I learned. So it was the, the example of what uh, your parents, I guess that you become like your parents. I know, Kelly, you have a lot to say about that, especially yeah. where you are in your life now and how that has kind of healed you. Absolutely. And sh shaped you. Absolutely. And I mean, with my dad now, it, it's so interesting because with him, we talk about so much. Mm -hmm. And I just think about, one, all the craziness like I had to go through with relationships. Mm -hmm. We were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, bad choices. Yeah, bad choices mm -hmm. because I didn't know him. Yeah. So as I'm sitting up getting to know him and he's talking to me about everything and we're having these actual like father-daughter moments mm -hmm. like when we first connected. And I remember the first time I had a, I, this sounds really crazy, but... I talked to a, a therapist about it too, but I was like, I just, I'm kind of like obsessed with him right now. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to him all the time. And they're like, yeah, well, that's because you didn't experience that right. at two and mm -hmm. three and mm -hmm. four and five. And here you are having these new relationships, like mm -hmm. with your, this new relationship with your dad. And it blessed me because I'm like, oh, that's why I can't communicate with a male properly. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm just noticing all these different things. But the more he and I talk, the more it's like, I'm, um, all Working that, stuff, that is, stuff through. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, but it takes some time. And I'm 41. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still figuring it out. I think that sometimes at a certain age, I know I'm like, oh, I got it. I, can, I, I figured it out. Can't I, I, we exactly. Never figured it out. <laughs> exactly. You are known to be this great mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, your, kids, your kids share stories of you, what a great mom you are, are all the time. And I have to imagine that's also partially from what you saw. Yeah. Your mom, your Absolutely. dad. My dad was very quiet and uh, sort of shy. <clears throat> he only said things when he needed to say them. You know, mm -hmm. he was really quiet. But my mom was just this whole lesson about, um, you know, your family being first priority with you, staying humble, keeping God first, like all of the things that I've tried to instill in my kids. I, my mom was the teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a teacher all the time. And... You said something about leading that for your kids to see the example. I don't care what you tell them because I know so many parents mm -hmm. that talk a good mm -hmm. talk and they tell their kids, but then they go do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And the kids don't take those lessons well because it's not about what you tell them. It's, it's the example that they see. Mm -hmm. You, if you get up every day, even when you're sick and you don't have excuses for everything and you challenge and you fight through things and you don't complain, then your kids are a product of that. And that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, no excuses. My mom just didn't she didn't like you to have excuses. And she always said, you know, look back at what you did and what your part was. And that's something that I live by all the time. That's an important lesson, too, because it's easy to point the finger at everybody else. But at the end of yeah. the day, what did you do? What are you going to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had great examples of that, you know. There were 10 years when I couldn't stand my husband. <laughs> <laughs> My 
my relationship with Barack was all about our partnership. If I was going to have an equal voice with this very opinionated man, I had to get myself up. I had to set myself off to a place where I was confident that I was going to be his equal. There's a moment in your book where you talk about one of your fears, but then it goes to this moment with your husband. And so it was the moment after you wrote Becoming, and you're mm -hmm. going on this book tour, yeah. and you're scared. Okay, so I watched yeah. the book tour, I went to the book tour. <laughs> Welcome Michelle Obama! And you seem so regal and together, <laughs> and she could never be scared, this woman. Mm -hmm. So then when you read the book, and you, and you had these fears and this anxiety about mm -hmm. going out to promote this book, and you, you say that your husband mm -hmm. was the one, to reassure you and give you this confidence back. I just, can I read this little, please, this little line here? Yeah. I don't have my reading glasses on. When you turn your, when you hit like your 40s, <laughs> like, you like need you reading need glasses. Need <laughs> I don't have them here, so hopefully, maybe you should read this one. <laughs> I got you, Angie, don't worry about it, I got you. With the 20s, the 20-year-old 20 eyes. Read the line, please. <laughs> After, <laughs> After I'd spilled all my fears, he simply reassured me that the book was great and so was I. He helped me remember that anxiety was a natural part of doing something new and big. He then wrapped his arms around me and touched his forehead lightly to mine. Mm. It was all I needed. Come on! Are you kidding me? Are you yeah. kidding me? That's, that's just... Is this a romantic you're novel? In, but you know what? It's a romantic it's so, novel. It is a romantic novel. <laughs> it's like, he grabbed my arms and then... Oh, I'm like, oh my God. God. I couldn't have read it as well as Winnie did. That I know, was that was right. really that good. Was really but, and, but the point of that is the two things. Number one, the, that you still need that kind yeah. of reassurance from somebody that you love and mm -hmm. trust and the most important Absolutely. person in your life. And, and then also, to me, that you chose well oh, in partnership. Well, oh, yes. yes. Because in our, in our you know, most vulnerable moments, you would hope that the person that is by your side is the person that can lift you up when you need it. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that, to me, was like a really nice, tender moment to show. I mean, the head-to-head -head thing is really so sweet. Yo, I, but you really have chosen well. So I wonder for the panel, mm -hmm. if there's advice in that, by the mm -hmm. way. You have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you clearly are happy. Everybody's... Both of you are very happy. I'm happy. I'm not married, but I'm very happy. Are you single, guys? I don't want to get in your business. We working on that. All right, working all right, you working. Oh, we working But on I'm just saying, Well, then like, this, then, really then listen up <laughs> right now. Right. No, but in love, like uh, making the right choices and choosing well, like what, what advice do you give to people in that space? What do you tell your daughters? What do you tell 20-somethings still mm -hmm. in the world? And well, as I was saying, the, the, first, the first job is to be a whole person in yourself, mm -hmm. right? You, you have to know yourself before you can know who you want to partner with. People want to be married, want to partner without knowing, well, who are you? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to partner? Are you ready for the compromise and the sacrifice and the challenge of it? And then if you are, who do you want to do it with? Um, is that other person whole? Right? So what I try to get Ooh. my daughters to focus That's on important. is... You might have had to slow down on that. You know, <laughs> is, that other is the other whole? person whole? You have to be whole, so you need to do the work to be as whole as you can be, and that's a forever journey. So at some point, you're gonna go into a relationship flawed because we're all still about, I'm still yeah. perfecting myself, my relationship, my marriage. We're gonna be doing that until the day we die. Mm -hmm. We are gonna be learning and growing and get mad and restarting all the way through that is marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step that I tell my girls is, can you, can you feed yourself? Do you know who you wanna be? Can you, can you, what do you bring to the table? You know, are you bringing something other than your beautiful self? Mm -hmm. You know, can you be the other half of a real partnership if something went wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, and now you want to make sure the other person is that too. And you don't know that at 21. You know, you, you, don't, you just don't know that about yourself yet. So I, I believe you can fall in love, but don't get married yeah. until you've been out in the world and you've done some things and you've tried some stuff on. So that's one of the things that I say. So I think it helped me. I think I met Barack when I was 26. I think we married at 28. He was, uh, he was older. Um, 
And I think he was <laughs> Look at her. clearer. I'm 28. That's looking like my timeline. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we met at 26. I'm but 28 if, now. But, 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 it, but that's... The, I don't even want anybody to think in terms of mm -hmm. a timeline, yeah, yeah. right? Because too many people are rushing to get married because they think they're supposed to be married. Mm -hmm. And I see this. I don't know if you see. You see, young, it's like, why'd you, why'd yeah. you get married? Yeah. And why'd you marry? Good. Exactly. It's the oh, thing. I wasn't saying it for that. Checkbox. I was saying that because I don't want to rush. <laughs> <laughs> then, then as you should. But and there's that pressure out there mm -hmm. for, for us. Yeah. Well, where does that pressure come from to, to mm -hmm. check that box? Because... Yeah. If you check the wrong box, it's the worst it's thing. Costly. It is a costly Ooh. check mark. Talk about it, Miss Dana. Talk about it. I remember you saying in some article or something that I read that you said, who am I going to meet yeah. at 58? Like, I'm not hanging out at the club. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is usually not a good place to meet your, your husband anyway. <laughs> it's true. I mean, um, it was starting all over again, but I knew that that's something that I wanted in my life and I just saw it for myself and I prayed on it and I prayed for the right person to come along. And you know, he, he, I've known him for, at that time, for maybe 36 years or something. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so it, it was great to find that person, but I always had envisioned myself being married because I like being married, Yeah, you know? What is that prayer for? You're praying for a partner? You're praying for somebody that is a whole? Or That's you're praying whole for, and that, what you, you like, know, what is, is the spiritually evenly yoked with me, that has the same interest as me. Because as much as opposites attract, you have to have that commonality. You have to have something that you have in common that you do together and that you enjoy together. So I pray for all of that. The first time I didn't pray, I was just all love and love, mm -hmm. you know, but the second time I was very deliberate in what I wanted. Mm. I know, Kelly, you have been very honest about how Tim has been amazing for you. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> she said, yes. Look how she loves yes. her husband. Yes. yes. Well, you know, here's the thing. I am learning. I am learning how to be a wife. I am learning every single day of when to, you, I don't want to say like pick a fight, but, but what to, you know, respond to and what not to respond yeah. to. Why am I, why is this a trigger for me? Then yeah. I have to think about it. So I'm, right now I'm thinking a lot. You're and, choosing and, your battles. I'm choosing my, I'm picking and choosing my battles. And I'm taking yourself. account of it. Yeah, like I, I literally had to call last night because he called me about something and he was right about it. And <laughs> this, <laughs> <laughs> And I we'll was we'll just, blur that out. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> he was right about it, and I was just like, I sat and I thought about it. I was like, why was I so mean? I was mean. Mm. And I called him back. I said, yo, I was like, my bad. I said, I was very defensive. I said, and it was because I just want to know this part so bad. Mm -hmm. And you do know that about me. I apologize for fighting you on it. But can you say it like this the next time? <laughs> Not right. like this. That makes because a difference, too. It does. I was like, because delivery is a trigger for uh -huh. me. And so um, he understood. But for me, it's just all about communicating. Well, and this is the give and take of relationships that I see in young couples. I see them giving up too fast, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't talk about how much work mm -hmm. is required and how hard it is even when you are madly in love with the person, even when everything works out right, bringing two lives together, hard. It's, it is one of the hardest things yes. to do, but if you just, you know, if you understand that it is a process mm -hmm. and that a lot of times, and I, people think I'm being catty by saying this, it's like there were 10 years well, I couldn't stand my husband. <laughs> you know? do say that. You <laughs> say that. years. <laughs> and guess when it happened? When those kids were little, right? Yeah. Yes. Right? Because, you know, you can be all great individually when, you, when you're just married. You got your life. He's got his. You come together. It's all, ooh, good to see you. Bye. Take it easy. <laughs> and then you have kids. Not take it easy. Take it easy. You're traveling. That's great. Good. I get to hang, hang out and watch the TV I want to watch. Right. But the minute we had kids, it was like, where are you going? <laughs> and how far? And you start measuring. It's like, how many diapers did you change? Mm -hmm. And, oh, you're golfing? Yeah. Oh, you got time? Oh, you got time to golf? <laughs> <laughs> How you at the gym all the time? I Why are you in gym? my brain right now? <laughs> I'm like, that 
that's when, all, that's when all the measuring <laughs> starts dolphins. because you got this project. Yes. And guess what? Little kids, they're terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They, 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 they have demands. Oh my God. They don't You're talk. Right. They're poor communicators. Yes. They cry all the time. They're yes. irrational. They're, yes. they're, they're selfish. Needy. <laughs> they're so and angry. you love them more than <laughs> anything. anything. Oh. Yes. And so you can't blame them. No. Right? Because look, they're cute. And he's so cute. <laughs> and look at him throwing his plate. That's so cute. <laughs> so you turn that ire on each other. Yes. You know, and for 10 years while we're trying to build our careers and, you know, worrying about school and who's doing what and what, what you know, I was like, oh, this isn't even. No. Right. And yeah. guess that is a what? Long time. Life Marriage is. isn't 50 yeah. 50 yeah. ever, mm. ever. There are times I'm 70, he's 30. Mm -hmm. There are times he's 60, 40. But guess what? 10 years, we've been married 30. Wow. I would take 10 bad years over 30. It's just how you look at it, mm. right? And people give up for the set, five years. I can't take it. How it do you bad. know? What is the, because sometimes you got to know your person. Do you like mm -hmm. him? I mean, you right. could be mad at him, but do you still look at him and go, I, I'm not happy with you, but I respect you. Right. I, I don't agree with you. Yes. But you, but you're still a kind, smart person, yeah. the feelings are going to change over time, right? Yeah. You're not going to always be... <gasps> yeah. So the minute that goes, people want to give up on it. It's mm -hmm. true. But now you're in the work. You're in the work of it, and that's why I want to talk about the work of it, the work of any relationship, the work of friendship. Yeah. When I first started modeling, my grandfather was driving me somewhere, and he was like, when y'all gonna get a good job at the mall again? <laughs> I personally have plenty of mornings when I flip on the bathroom light, take one look, and desperately want to flip it off again. Face to face with myself, I'll impulsively start in on cataloging my flaws. And in the book, you talk about, I found this interesting, about looking in the mirror and not liking what you see in the mirror and sometimes even wanting to turn the light off in the bathroom. I think we're socialized as women, women of color. Yes. You know, yeah. if we don't see ourselves, we didn't grow up seeing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I write about the first time I felt different. I talk about my height, mm -hmm. right? Because at the time when I was raised, being a tall, strong, opinionated black woman, this was before Title IX was had taken fully into effect. There was no Serena and Venus. Right, there right. was no, there, you know, there were just, there were good times, the Jeffersons, you mm -hmm. know, maybe Diane Carroll, you know, the limited amounts of role models that we yeah. have. Mm -hmm. And when you do not see yourself, society sets you up to constantly question whether you're enough, whether mm -hmm. you're good enough. Mm -hmm. and Whether you're beautiful. Whether you're yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And no matter who you are, you, you hold on to that image of yourself. I can't imagine in your world, in yeah. fashion and modeling and all of that, how... For sure. Mm -hmm. Even, like, I mean, it's so true with, like, not being able to always see someone of color. But then even for me growing up, I thought I was the only person in the world with my skin condition. Mm -hmm. So I felt so alienating. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think my least favorite question when, when people like interview me is, how are you so confident? Ooh. Mm. How do you, how are you always waking up so confident? Yeah. And so yeah. why yeah. would I not be that way? Right. People say, oh, you're mm. so brave. Yeah, oh, you're so right. brave. Right. I'm what? Right. what? For oh, being okay. myself, yeah. Yeah. Like, right. for just yeah. like living in my own skin, I'm brave. Like yeah. that's kind of wild to me. Wild. Are you telling me I shouldn't be? Right. No, they're Is there something telling you wrong that they with? don't have it. Right, I, exactly. I'm, I'm learning that that's when right. they ask the question like that, I was yeah. like, oh, that's what you lack. Mm. So how do I actually, I in my head, Head, I'm like, how do I fill you up just a little bit so you can feel mm. maybe as good as I do, even in this in this moment? Right. You know what I mean? I might not feel good like 10 hours from now, 10 minutes from now, but in this moment, you need this more than I do. Mm. <laughs> Let me fill you up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I always feel like those questions mm. ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but sometimes it is from the inside, and you talk about this in the book also, about this, we have voices in our head. Yeah. And it's not just about how we look. Sometimes the voice in our head is like, oh, you need to lose five pounds, you need to right. do this, you need to, but sometimes the voices are, 
uh, you're not capable of this. Right. You, yeah. There are people better, more qualified than yeah. you. Yeah. I, I do that oh, to myself yeah. all the time. I'll have a yeah. great idea. And if, if I tell you guys my great idea and none of you look, and you all look like you don't really mm -hmm. get it, I think oh, maybe it's not a good idea. Right. Yeah. Instead of like uh, pushing through that, but I realize, to your point in mm -hmm. your book, that is just a, that's just a voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, if you, so I guess I would ask all of you is like, what is that voice for you and how do you control it? How do you I think take the reins on that? I'm defiant against that voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do? I think I try to be as defiant against that voice as possible because like, especially coming from a family of like immigrants, like I'm first generation Canadian. When I first started modeling, my grandfather was driving me somewhere and he was like, when y'all gonna get a good job at the mall again? <laughs> 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 and I was like, do you know, like, I'm traveling the world and, like, you know, I'm starting to, like, actually make some ball, money. Yeah, 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 exactly. It wasn't, like, a real <laughs> job yeah. to my family. So they always kind of, like, belittled my career. Mm -hmm. Not like my mom and my dad were always really supportive, but, like, you know, like, extended family. They're always like, what's she doing with her life? She's mm -hmm. doing this. So she's going here, whatever. And I always just have to be like, you know what? They will see it. Mm -hmm. They will see the vision. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I'm going to be able to go home years from now and be like, hey, you hey, proud hey, now? Yeah. This is what this modeling <laughs> thing was. Yeah. Um, Christina, tell me about your voices in your head. I think my biggest voice in my life has been um, if I, the first time I spoke in front of a group, I was so scared and mm. so nervous. And my husband tried to prepare me as much as he could, and I wrote the speech for like two weeks because I was terrified. And when I went there, all I could think of is, God, they got all these smart people in here. Mm -hmm. You know, these educated people, these people with all this experience. And I'm not educated. And I'm not, oh God, they're better speakers She's than me. In life. Yeah, it was really crazy. And, and my minister was there. And she took the speech and tore it up. And mm -hmm. I was like, what are you doing? And she said, Tina, Go out there and speak for your heart because you are amazing. Mm. And you don't have to be this or that or fit into any kind of, um, you know, shape or size. Just go out and be you. And I found out that I was pretty, pretty good. And it wasn't about the education, but that is a voice that kind of comes in my head. Still? Mm. From, still from time to time. And, and like you said, I'm resistant to it. So mm. I fight it and I say, you know, I give myself a pep talk. Yeah, well, no. this is one of those things that goes back to vulnerability and why it is so important to share those, those things. Mm -hmm. Because when we do that, as I say in the book, we broaden the definition of who matters. Mm -hmm. you know, um, because we do live in a world where it's, there is a very narrow definition of who belongs at exactly. the table, mm -hmm. who deserves, who is beautiful. And it, and, and it is usually white, it is usually male, it is a, usually a certain income bracket, mm -hmm. right? And that eliminates- Education. 99% of the world, of us, yeah. right? Especially. Of the world, yes. not even just of us, yes. of the world, because there's so many people who feel othered. You know, if you yeah. live in some farm town in a p poor rural community, mm -hmm. you feel like an other yes. because there is no model for you. You know, if you're not educated, I don't care what color your skin and what gender is, you feel other. Mm -hmm. But when we share, when we break down those walls and put our, our flaws, our stories, our vulnerabilities out there, and then people go, oh... Miss Tina, oh, she, she didn't think she could be a good public speaker, right? You, there's some young person right now who is looking up to you who n would never know that you ever felt fear, mm. you know? Mm. But when we put our, our stuff out there and we share our, our, our despites, as I say, mm -hmm. when we own our flaws and use them as our superpowers, mm -hmm. not only do we get stronger, but we make other people stronger in the process yes. because there's so many ways to be a human. Yeah. Right. On this planet. It's yeah. so true. You know? I'm First Lady. I have, I have three armored cars with me at any time. <laughs> I live in the White House. Can you relate? Who is going to come up to me and go, hi, <laughs> you want to get lunch? And if they do, <laughs> then you're suspicious because yeah, you're like, right. oh, you're thirsty. <laughs> The dream team. I know this what is great. Great, great group. I love that you shared that. Oh, so it's my shit.
It's not always easy to make friends. You talk about in the book um, having to like work on that, especially in the White House, uh, about making sure you had your friends in that community. How do you know? How do you do that? Like, how? What? Are, what are the things that are important to you in picking friends? The same way you pick, you choose your husband or your spouse. I think picking friends is equally as important. Yeah. But you've had your friends for a long time. I've had a lot of them for a long time, yeah. but I made new friends in the White House, mm -hmm. right? And that's part of what I write about because even as an, I've made friends throughout my life. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like I call them daisies in a field. You see one, it's like oh. Hey, you, I'm gonna keep you, let's keep going again. <laughs> you know, my, my other daisies learn, I you know, make sure my daisies know each other right. because it's a good community of people. Yeah. Because you need different people at different phases in your life. So true. When I got to the White House and my kids were little, I wrote right about the fact that I needed mom friends, mm -hmm. right? Because if we were gonna be normal, right? If I'm going to the parent-teacher conference, I can't be Michelle Obama, the first lady. Mm -hmm. That makes my kids' lives mm -hmm. unusual. Mm -hmm. They have to have sleepovers. So I have to know you. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna, my child's gonna sleep over there? I've got to know you. I gotta know the ins and outs. I gotta know who's giving that party that all the sophomores are going to, right? right? I had to have that. And when you have kids, you need parent friends to help you through that period of time. That's right. So I couldn't cut that off because Malia was in fifth grade and Sasha was in second grade when we got to the White House. They were wow. 10 and seven. Wow. We were just beginning the parenting process. Wow. So a lot of my good friends, I had to figure out, how, I'm first lady, I have, I have three armored cars with me at any time. <laughs> I live in the White House. Can you relate? Who is going to come up to me and go, hi, <laughs> you wanna get lunch? And if they do, <laughs> then you're suspicious, cause yeah, you're like, right. oh, you're thirsty. Exactly. <laughs> so, so how do you do that? How do you choose? What, what, what are you well, looking for? What the is the characteristic? I, well, first I just looked at, like the first friend I made, it was like her daughter, she was a black mom. I was like, oh, black mom. Yeah. <laughs> because we're in a predominantly white school. I was like, y Sasha, you and Olivia are gonna be friends because she's a black girl and they didn't even like each other. But oh, I was wow. like, I wanna get to know her mother because I, I wanted to the black mom experience. It's right. like, <laughs> how are you dealing with which teachers should yes. I look out for? That's so yeah. real. So I just invited her wow. over. <laughs> And she came, and you sort of watch how people carry themselves in the situation. It's like she was chill. She managed the process. She wasn't mm -hmm. thirsty. She was funny, and so you sl slowly open up the the, the aperture, <laughs> right? The boundaries you put up, you slowly let them go, and people will show you who they are. That's yes. the confidence. Yeah that you get, I'm confident that I'll let somebody in because they'll let me know whether they should stay in. Mm -hmm. yes. Or whether it's like, oh, well, nope. You know, oh, yes. that's why I try to teach the girls, be open to friendship, but watch what people do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because they will Don't show ignore you. It. Don't right. ignore yeah. it when yeah. they show you a part of themselves that's like, huh? Yeah. And then we talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about, was this crazy? Right. This crazy thing that your friend did? Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Is that normal crazy or is that run crazy? Right. Because right? <laughs> there are levels to the There crazy. are levels of crazy. <laughs> levels. I got plenty of crazy friends. All my friends, they know them. They're all crazy. One but. of the reasons for me personally, I'll let the whole panel speak to this, that you are for my forever first lady. I had multiple girlfriends who said they had been invited to meet Mrs. Obama and you were having these like Michelle, by the way. Okay, it's Michelle. Like, it's like, it's All right, like, what are you yeah. talking? About? <laughs> I may call you Mrs. Obama again later, but right, right here I'm going to go with Michelle. It feels more comfortable. And no, but they were saying Mrs. Obama was having these circles where you were meeting with all types of oh, women yeah. and you were having these like uh, dinners. You were inviting people. Even mm -hmm. the White House was inclusive. Mm -hmm. First time I ever was invited to the yeah. White House was yeah. a couple years that you guys were in. And you just, uh, it was like you brought everybody. Mm -hmm. yes. you, you were so mindful about bringing all of I us. Like to come. <laughs> I would like to come. You were probably 12. <laughs> yeah, you know, those experiences were important to me. Yeah. It's like staying open, when you're president, first lady, it's it's a it, it has to be a deliberate act because you do live in the biggest, tightest, most secure bubble in the world. And if you're not deliberate about it, you can get lost in that. Yeah. And my whole feeling, as I write about it, 
how can I be a good first lady if I'm not connecting with people in a normal way? This is kind of like I'm what you were talking having, about. This is why, if I'm not having regular conversations, if, if I'm not just sitting chatting, this is right. why this conversation is important. It's important to me. Yeah. It gives me insight into where people are. I'm not standing in the grocery store line anymore. You know, some of the best right. information you get is in the grocery, <laughs> store. <laughs> the grocery <laughs> store line. You're like, what are they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what are they worrying about? You know, right. that, that to me is gone. So I I'd have to meet with other moms. I'd want to hear what they cared about, mm -hmm. hear what their fears mm -hmm. were. So we opened the White House in that way because nobody's inviting you over because right, yeah. everybody's thinking she doesn't want to come. Right. You yeah, know, yeah. so I had to to do that, and I had to do that with kids. In, most importantly, making sure young people, because what I also understood about the White House is there were there are many kids who would never get to set foot inside that house but for us, yes. because people think about their kids. They don't always think about our kids. Yes. And we're th we understand the life-changing nature that it can have on a child for them to walk into the White House mm -hmm. yeah. and have the First Lady look them in the eye and say, I see you, mm -hmm. and you are important, and you matter. And this is possible? And this yes. is possible? Yes. Yes. And that's why it can't be Mrs. Obama, because yeah. it's like, if you see me up here, you don't know you can get there. Yeah. You have to know Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know that little girl on 74th and Euclid. You have to see the whole journey. You can't just see me here. Right. You have to see my poor house, my father's struggles, what we overcame, because it's the same thing you're doing. You can do this. Yeah. You can go on this ride, but it takes some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it takes some patience. Mm -hmm. It takes being vulnerable. Yeah. It takes not letting somebody dim your light because right. people will be out there doing it for you. So mm -hmm. staying mm -hmm. open to me is like a superpower. I end the book with answering the question, do we still go high? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I try to answer that I'm question. Like Our motto is, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> I end the book with answering the question, do we still go high? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I try to answer that By question. By the way, that's va one valid of the, question. What it is, especially in these times, yeah. when we all feel low, when we all, because what, we feel that because our leaders have taken us there. You know, they have taken us there, but also it's just like you. I, I grew so up, I should say some of our leaders yes, have taken a lot, us there. Yes, Let me a lot. It's more than I've that. ever in yeah. my lifetime seen. Yeah, and I, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn. My family's from the Bronx, and you know, if somebody keeps poking you, mm -hmm. or shoving you, or bullying you, yeah. you're supposed to, to you you're supposed to like you know <laughs> you're supposed to buckle up and right. let them know you know. And so sometimes going high sometimes feels like almost like you're not fighting back enough right. like yeah. when somebody's yeah. go, like just yeah. abusive in a way like yeah. some of what's happening in the world is abusive exactly yeah, but absolutely. going high isn't ignoring it mm -hmm. it isn't about pretending like it didn't happen it's about being strategic in your reaction to it mm -hmm. right Amen. because how what we give out we get back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we we've lived with leadership that goes low and guess what? It makes us all, all of us, I don't care what color skin, we have felt depressed and down and sad and angry and confused. I think the tone of the country when we were there was up for everybody, whether they wanted to admit it or not. Mm -hmm. Because there's something about leadership operating on a high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes everybody rise to that level. And to me, I yeah. think that that's a responsibility of having a platform. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean you don't have those feelings. Look, that's why I write. I, oh, I go low in my mind, around my friends. <laughs> me too. You know, it's like, let's just yeah, have just a go low get it out. session. Yes. Yes. You get it out. Because I want to yeah. fight you, sometimes. You, you yes. get it out. But Ooh. the public response is about what's the strategy? Mm -hmm. Where are we trying to get to? Mm. And if going low, if, if it's me just acting out my basest emotion, to me that's selfish, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. like, what? Oh, I, I, well, there's so much I could be doing with my platform yeah. that could take people to a dark place, that could get people angry, right? Because people respect me. Mm -hmm. So I could be like, act this way. 
Like but, a lot of people do. But mm -hmm. the responsibility when we all, because we all have a platform yeah. when we're in public, it's like, even if I have to show you what grace looks like, because I can take it. I can, I can, I can, I can settle myself. I can, I can soothe myself. I have enough to give you grace, mm. you know? And I think we all do. Yes. We all are capable of it. But so that's why I say to young people, this isn't about complacency. Going high isn't about ignoring. It's about taking steps that will lead to a goal. I could curse you out. That would make me feel good. But do, do I then understand you? Did you mm -hmm. really understand me? Mm -hmm. did, did we, are we moving the agenda forward? But just to know, in your mind sometimes. Oh, please, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you hear she said, oh, we yes. have low sessions. I'm like, <laughs> she's what giving us options. Session? Session? <laughs> yes, we it. have options now. Yeah. And we're, you, like the way that you talk about integrity mm -hmm. and how to manage that and process and yeah. like, holding that and keeping that. That's why you're a gift because you you are the example because we don't always have it and we don't always yeah. know what tools we yeah. we have ourselves to even come to, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. it's all yeah. good, you know, and holding that integrity, like you said, yeah. and not abusing your yeah. platform. And, and that's yeah. a, another reason why kitchen tables are important. I love that's that you the safe that place you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You let that out, yeah. you know? Right. Uh, who do I, when I need to go low, I'm like, ma. Guess what just happened? Right. Sit down. And I'm just blah, blah, and she's like, oh, okay, well that's interesting. So what are you gonna do about it? Mm. Right. We always think we're working towards figuring it out. Yes. We think at twenty eight at twenty five, by the time I'm twenty eight, I'm gonna have it figured right. out. You're not. Yeah. And then as soon as you think you got the answer, <laughs> they change I'm the not. question. That's right. Yes. <laughs> it's true. The questions start to change, yeah. I think, the older you get, which is very cool because yeah. I think you can see how far you've come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm learning to enjoy the process. Yes. Oh, that's good. Because sometimes, well, at least for me, you know, you're always trying to get from point A to point B yeah. that you forget to enjoy it. And then you're like, wait, I didn't. And, and now it's easier for me to prioritize the things that are important to me, like family yeah. and making up for lost time and not holding on to things or... Um, yeah, just just uh, enjoying the, the mm -hmm. process and mm -hmm. not being afraid of the new questions when you yeah. think you have the answers. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, in the title of the book, Overcoming in Uncertain Times, mm -hmm. because, look, the only thing that is guaranteed is uncertainty. True. That is uncertainty, pain, fear. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. And if we're spending our lives trying not to feel that, or not learning how to cope in that, mm -hmm. we will always struggle, yeah. you know? So some of it is like, yeah, uncertainty is baked into the process of being human. Mm -hmm. So now what are we gonna do, mm -hmm. <laughs> given that, right? Mm -hmm. Those of us who are older and just are experiencing uncertainty and fear and pain, we're lucky. Yes. Right? It's like, oh, you, oh, you, you just oh, you now just feel a little, oh, oh, this COVID thing is what threw you, right? right. Try, try being abused, try poverty, right. try growing up in war, try, right. there, more people live in uncertainty than not. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what you get through that process are these tools mm -hmm. and you get a resilience that goes with it. So instead of us fighting against it, right? You know, it's like, okay, this is, this is part of the process. Mm -hmm. You know, there, and there is growth on the other side of that. There is, that's where growth, that's how it happens. That's true. That's the only way it happens. Growth it doesn't, is the best. yeah. Growth is the best. It's a good thing. I love so it, girl. Girl. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> but there's something else well, so you talk good. about, and I'm like, I loved reading this in your book because I'm guilty of this. I always, I'm very, I don't like to complain because I always know somebody has it worse than me. Right. I always try to think about what somebody else is going through. But the downside of that is you don't allow yourself to kind of be honest in your own problems sometimes. You have this story in the book where you talk about talking to these young girls after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and she was saying how hard something is, but she was like, but it's fine. And, you're, and you were like, I'm, I know I'm messing up the words. Mm -hmm. no, you know the story yeah. I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and you were like, no, but it's okay. It's hard is okay. It's okay. Yes, people have worse scenarios yeah. and worse things going on, but it's okay to acknowledge 
when something's hard. When yeah. something's hard yeah. or, you know? or you're not and, okay. And we or, as women try this, that same thing. Like you said, how are you? Great. Everything's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got this yeah. or I don't. And we constantly go back and forth in between that feeling of I got to present like I got it. Mm -hmm. Right. But then I feel like, oh, this is so hard and I'm not sure and I can't get out of bed, you know, <laughs> and that's all part of it, too. Yeah. That's a chapter I call The Power of Small, um, because I find that it, particularly with young people and all of us, we're taught to aim big, grab for the most, change the world. You know, to quote one of these girls wrote me, she's like, I want to do big things like Beyonce. It's like, well, you, you're 12. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you want to have big goals, but sometimes our bigness overwhelms us mm -hmm. and it puts us in this, this, this state of stuck and depression when what we really need to do is take some smaller bites out of That's life. Right. Just, you know, mm. get out of bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important goal. Yeah. Like, get up every day. With young people, I'm like, you might want to be Beyonce, but you got to do your homework. Yeah. That's right. You can't fix your neighborhood if you're not going to school. That's right. You know, don't let great be the enemy of the good. Ooh. And I'll, oh, most I love of Thank great you. change happens in small bits, small actions. But we reward big, yeah. right? Big platform, you know? I was the first lady of the United States, but what was the best thing I could be was a good mother to the two kids I brought into the world before I could change any other girl's life. Mm. So the, I, I use the metaphor of knitting, something I took up over COVID, as, as a, a way of teaching me that when things are big, picking up these two needles and putting a knit and a pearl stitch together, row after row, and creating a sweater, mm -hmm. there's a calming sense in being able to control the thing on your lap. Mm -hmm. And we're so busy reaching for the big thing that we don't rest our minds and focus on our knitting, you mm -hmm. know? And I try to tell young people that. You cannot change your neighborhood if you are broken, mm -hmm. if you don't get your education. It's an important goal, you know? It's like, you can't finish college if you're taking your financial aid and paying your family's bills. I know you wanna help now, right. you wanna be there. You can't save for yourself and buy your mother a house before you can pay your bills. Yeah. You know, you can't leap before you walk, right. you know? And especially for many of us who've never seen success or anything, we think we've arrived sooner than we have, true. you know? And we're trying to fix everybody else before we're steady, mm -hmm. right? It's and true. especially for you guys in your 20s, I know there is pressure from yes. people, help me fix this, yeah. can you do this? That's the armor and the boundaries of, whoa, wait, do I have my world together first? Mm -hmm. You know, can I, am I really feeding me first? Mm -hmm. That's that mask on oxygen yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. true. Mm -hmm. It is. You cannot, if you are not a calm mother, happy, peaceful, emotionally sane, healthy. You can't help those babies. It's so true. You know, but we, especially as women, we don't even think like that. We are always trying to do the big, fix yeah. the everything, fix the outside. Mm -hmm. But there's power in small. There's power in small daily habits and accomplishments. And when I'm down, that's what I link on to. Instead of thinking about the big thing, let me think about the thing I can control. I'm trying to think right now, like, what am I going to go home and do? What small thing? I know what I'm going to do. I don't know. Knitting doesn't really... I might knit. I might knit. You might knit. You might knit. Yeah. By the you way, when she knit. said that, I said, well, there goes the knitting industry. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm already linked up. I've been on the cover of Vogue Knitting. Really? Oh, no, wow. the knitting community. They're like, what? You're going to have the cover of knitting today? I've been on the cover oh, of Vogue yeah. Knitting. <laughs> And it turned into a thing because it was a pre-tape picture mm -hmm. and I didn't have on knitting. I didn't oh, have wow. on a knitted top because it wasn't for the... And then the knitters got mad. Some did. Oh, then so some bad. went after the, the so people bad. were like coming after me over the knitting, came after them. And it was like a knitting war. <laughs> I wore weaves, extensions. I had protective styles because you get your hair done right. every day. Right, right, right. And sometimes twice a day if you're out heat. jumping jacks in the rain. Right, I mean, right. the things that I did, yep. yeah, wow. it's like, nope, put some extensions in.
I mean, everybody always had something to say uh, about every single thing. Is it oh from God. everything you wore? Everything you yeah. wore became a thing. Things would sell out. Remember, yes. you'd wear a dress, and then we'd all try to get it, and we couldn't. Thirty <laughs> seconds later, was there pressure in that? You know, it wasn't. I won't call it pressure because it's clothes. Okay. Right. <laughs> But there, it's a it's a responsibility. Is the the responsibility of okay, okay, this, this is a thing, you know. It's like how I look, what I say. All was of it, it before matters. when you were in the White House? Did you care about clothes like that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I love clothes, like but that. you know, it's like nobody seemed to care, right? <laughs> it's like, it, it, it didn't it didn't matter as much. I liked them, but nobody nobody cared. But it was just like everything with the platform mm -hmm. comes a responsibility to be thoughtful and mindful. So it wasn't a hassle, it was just kind of a, oh, okay, so you're gonna look at my shoes, mm -hmm. and I can be mad about that, but I can also send a message with the shoes, mm -hmm. right. since you're gonna talk about them. You could so also let send me... a message with the hair. With yes. the hair, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. That part. Okay. Yeah. That, <laughs> that part. You that wearing part. braids was a thing for people. Like. I didn't wear braids in the White House. After, but no? even now, oh, well. You returned, right, now who cares? Yeah, right. now. But why know. did you not? Well, be, because it was one of those things, like, I, I remember the second term when I cut bangs. Mm -hmm. That was every story. Was every I mean, story. I, I, could, I couldn't even, I'm talking about nutrition, and mm -hmm. the article leads with, but our bangs. Yeah. You know, so you realize, all right, do you, it's, it's a trade-off. It's trade -off. a distraction. Mm -hmm. Do right? I want, yeah. I, while I understand it, do I want that distraction? And when do I want the distraction? It, it's a strategic move. And, you know, and also to be honest, it's like we were the first. And I was like, right, first of all, they gotta get used to us. Yes, that's right. Now I can show up with some braids and now that's all we're talking about. I mean, that's when they turned, when we did a fist bump with each other, they turned Ooh. that into oh, a terrorist God, act, right? That it's just like, insane. who needs the hassle? Mm -hmm. Let me just straighten yeah. my hair and get healthy. Did you resent passed. that at all? Or was there any <laughs> resentment in that? <laughs> Is it, was your hair damaged? <laughs> no, because I had I, 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 no, I wore I wore weaves extensions. I had protective styles because you get your hair done every day, right, yeah. right, right. And sometimes twice a day if you're oh. out jumping jacks in the rain. Right, I mean, right. the things that I did, yep. yeah, wow. it's like no, nope, put some extensions in, or I did all kinds of things. I just kept it. I, whatever I mimicked, I mimicked what my hair was, yeah. right? But yeah, no, there was no way I would not have any hair on my head if I right. straightened it as much as I had to straighten it. So I did a little bit of everything, put a ponytail if I was, you know. But it was all a part of the conversation as a woman, and in the the line, it mattered how high my heel was. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to think about things differently wow. than Barack, you know? Yeah. And they'd be staffing him. All a man has to do would be like, you taking your tie off? Right. It's right. casual. Or the brown, <laughs> don't wear brown. Don't oh, wear the well, brown you suit. Want, that's right. what I'm saying. They <laughs> tripped out because he wore a tan suit. Yeah. You know, right. it's just like, okay, we're in this place. Right. You know, we have to prioritize. So I can't say that I resented it. I didn't resent it, but I used it. Yeah. I, I, I understood what I was doing with it. Mm -hmm. I, I made it a point to think about the designers I lifted up yeah. and the dresses that I wore and, you know, um, y using young designers, people mm -hmm. of color. Yeah. That was all very intentional. Choosing Jason Wu, who yeah. was an, a young designer, an immigrant, as for my inaugural gowns, was a statement. Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. intentional mm -hmm. because it was Oscar de la Renta, the old school people that used to dress the first right. ladies. And I was like, well, why? Why is why? that? Why do you just get this? Right. Why can't we give it to this young person? Because it will actually change his right. life, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Absolutely. Black Absolutely. designers. Right. But we did that with art. We did it with music. We did it, the first music series in the White House was spoken word. I was invited to that. I cried when I got the invitation. <laughs> but we, yes. but we, first but, time. I but that, it. we did a whole series of music events, right? You remember mm -hmm. through the White House, we had country, we had Broadway, yeah. we had designers in there, but we started with spoken word for a reason. Mm -hmm. It was like... Just a fun fact, mm -hmm. Lynn, Mo Lynn Manuel was at this. She talks about this in the mm -hmm. book. She mentions this in the book also. That was the first time we the met Lynn. The first time. He was there to perform pieces from this show he had called In the Heights. 
But no, had, no, 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 no. No, he was, listen, he oh, was supposed that what he to was do supposed the heights. To do? Right. But when he got there, uh-huh. he had been working on this piece for Hamilton, yeah. but nobody had heard it yet. No. It, and he did it there at the first time. He did time the very the first on. opening number for Hamilton. So we're wow. having all these young, I think Common was there. I yeah. think uh, Jill Scott, there was a bunch of different, and I wasn't a Broadway person, so I didn't know who this Slin Manuel Miranda was. So we're meeting all the <laughs> actors in the blue room. And I'm like, Barack and I are like, so what are you going to do, young man? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm going to perform a rap about Alexander Hamilton. Oh, wow. And Barack and I looked at him like, <laughs> <laughs> But you're not going to laugh in his face because he's about to go out. And we're like, right. oh, that's yeah, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> so he goes out and I talk about what it was like for him because he wrote about yeah, this, yeah, just yeah, being yeah. nervous because he, he had never performed that number before. Oh, wow. wow. Here we are in the East Room. You know, he's standing on a stage with George Washington and Martha Washington on either side, which is what the shot I wanted. I wanted spoken word to be done on that stage in that place to Mm. tell the world this is what our culture is. Mm. It is everything. It is all of it. And he performs the first number and of course it was good. And every day more slaves were being slaughtered or carted away across the waves. Our Hamilton kept his guard up inside. He was longing for something to But you right. set the, the stage for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You also set the stage for somebody like me from New York to, to run into people. Imagine you're at the White House my first time. I, I know him. I know Lynn. He's from New York. He's Puerto Rican. Hey! So yeah. we're, in the lo- <laughs> we're in the lobby of the White House. Like, hey, oh my God, I'm going to watch this in Heights. I was like, you got to, you got to. Re- he tells me he's going to do this piece I was like well you gotta rep New York he was like what should I do I said I don't know he said I said you you got a Yankee hat or something he's like no he said maybe I'll throw up the rock I was like do it throw up the rock (laughs) if you see the video of Lin-Manuel at the White House after he does the thing he goes like this he goes like (laughs) this at the end because we had that little banter about being from New York and representing New York I'm just saying, you guys, you created a space and intention, yes. intentionally created Everything a space so to include we everyone, and we are like forever grateful for that. When you don't have leadership that lifts it all up, mm-hmm. right, we feel how bad it feels when we are all aren't seen, oh, yes. you know, and so it matters. And this is what I will say to young people out here who are watching and thinking about voting or not voting. It matters who is leading us. You know, mm-hmm. it matters, you know, the tone that is set, mm-hmm. you know, it matters what people think are important, mm. you know. So when we don't vote, uh, you know, we take that for granted. We stay home because we're upset. You know, we didn't like how it worked out. That's that small power. Mm-hmm. It was seeing him next to y'all. Mm-hmm. You being a brown skin girl in the White House. So I wonder from the panel, like, how her position has affected all of you and how the way she's carried herself has affected you guys. I mean, we watched it at school. I mean, I'm from... Canada, but we still watched it at school. This because Canada, they know about the news. Yeah. <laughs> they watch the news in Canada. They watch the news like, in Canada. We watched it in school. My my mom, <laughs> my mom has pictures of uh, you and Barack in the house and like the inauguration picture, everything. Like it was so in big in Canada. Yeah, it was so big to see um, someone of color, someone that you could relate to, someone that looked like us mm-hmm. and that we could aspire to be great like. Mm-hmm. So it was really, really empowering. Mm. And same for me. I mean, I'm 68 years old. So I never thought... You look good. I know. Yeah, you say, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> say but that again. I never thought in my lifetime that I would see this. And what kept coming... I'm such a crybaby. I mean, I, know, I got allergies, but also... I mean, <laughs> just the thought that... It's you okay. Know, we gave everybody permission to cry today if <laughs> yeah. it happened. That my parents didn't get to see this because this was yeah. something that... Yeah you know, that they envisioned and something that I envisioned and to be able to live in a time where I got to see that and then to get to meet them and just for her to be so down to earth, like that is what struck me the most about this lady because she's never been the highbrow, like everybody feels comfortable, everybody sees 
uh, feel seen. Mm -hmm. She looks you in the eye. It's none of the hoidiness that you expect. And, you know, she's like tall and beautiful. And oh. I mean, I couldn't stop talking. The first time <laughs> you came to, you, you and the girls came to the concert, I was just like going on and on and on and on. <laughs> and yeah, so it was a dream come true for me. What about when your daughter sings at last <laughs> at the inauguration? What is mom what? thinking? Oh my God, everybody is bawling, including her. <laughs> The pride that was in that room was, I mean, it was that inauguration. That that Ugh. was a that was a feeling, you know. It it's was like the whole world was celebrating it, yes. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, that was a thing. Go ahead, Miss Kelly. <laughs> I literally just told myself for a minute, you better not start crying. Um, for me, I it's, encourage it. It's all oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but for me, it's grace. I I. I I definitely say you lead with grace every step of the way. It and I, you give us like peeks into your marriage and your books and motherhood and your books. But I'm like, wow! <laughs> like <laughs> in times where you don't have to be, and just the fact that you lead with grace in everything that you do. And I'm so mad you said you said seen, because I'll never forget. Um, visiting, and you said, you better bring that baby up here talking about yeah. Titan. She said, you better bring that baby up here so he can come to the White House. I said, okay. I was like, Tim, we going to the White House. Yeah. <laughs> so, so literally, I got Titan there, and it was seeing him next to y'all. Mm -hmm. You being a brown skin girl mm -hmm. in the White House and feeling like we 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 can do yes. this, you know. Yeah. That that was so much pride for me. So oh, that's what I I love the most um, is that you always leave with grace. And I I say that all the time. I want to leave with grace. That is my WWMD. <laughs> 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 because I mean, people can test you, but you yeah. like you're like when they go low, we go high. I was like, do we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really make me mad over here. And I don't know how to react to them right now. Now, Michelle. Yes. But to go back to what you were saying earlier, and I still want to get your moment, but to go back to what you were saying earlier, Michelle, about how you, when you were young, you could count on your hands how many women mm -hmm. looked like you on TV That's and right. you didn't have those yeah. moments. Can you even imagine being you, being young, Michelle, right. having a woman like you in the White House? Do, can you imagine how that would have changed your life? Yes. Winnie, when you said that you know, how do you overcome some of that stuff? It's like, I think I was always temperamentally, I'll show you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. you, you're yeah. born with that thing. You know yes. what you can do. That's right. So if I'm like honest with myself, when I was little, I, I was like, I could do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I can, you know, but slowly but surely, that gets tamped out of mm -hmm. us. It gets mm -hmm. blown out of us, but it's in there, right? So yeah, there was a part of me that's like, I can do, I, I am so much better than what these people think I can mm -hmm. be. Right. And I remember feeling that at a very young age. Um, and I just say this to the kids out there who know what they have. I don't care where you're from. Mm -hmm. You know better what you're capable of doing. People will set your bar so low for you, especially if you are of color, mm -hmm. especially if you are an other. And you just have to kind of hold on. You have to yeah. fight to hold on to that thing inside of you. Mm -hmm. right? And ignore the bad little voice. That exactly, might, yeah. which is why I spend so much time with young people because I just want them to be seen. It's like you know you got it in you. I don't care what neighborhood you grew up with. I don't care what your mother was or wasn't for you. You know who you are. Yeah. You know, so now we get to show more of us mm -hmm. are getting to show all that we have always been. Absolutely. There is nothing new about this Michelle Obama. I was this at four. I was this at seven. Thank God I had parents who saw me, yeah. right, and other people who saw me. But it isn't a surprise that we're all up here. Right. Mm -hmm. I know grace. I live with grace. I am mimicking what I see. This ain't new. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is in all of us. And then I see these, this generation of greatness come up, coming up. 
and all that. It's inspiring. It's just you like, have to share you, your, you, you have to share you, your Michelle you know Obama you story. Have, though. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, no, I was a little girl. Must have been eight <laughs> like, or nine. You were yeah. Malia's age. Mm -hmm. How old is Malia now? She's 24. And you, how old yeah. are you? And I'm 25. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. So that's I was why she's little. looking at you like that. She yeah, keeps going. Like, <laughs> she's like, that's my that's baby. The baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. And I, I love being the baby. You know? um, but I was really little. But the thing about that whole moment was the fact that I felt the impact at mm -hmm. such a young age. Mm -hmm. Like, it was all around me. Like, I would walk out in my small town, Vallejo, California, mm -hmm. and there would be posters everywhere. People, you changed the tone of, of just what we believed was possible. Like you said, seeing that, and it was like, whoa, oh my gosh, a black family. Like, and you don't, <laughs> when you're a kid, like, you don't really understand, like, what could come of that, but it's just seeing it. It's yeah. just seeing it. It's like, oh, wow. And then you start walking different, you start talking differently, you start having a different kind of, confidence and and I think everybody felt that and I I was so young but I felt that we have to rap I hate that we have to rap no I would like us all to go to like um, somewhere no. and have a glass of wine after that I can continue this conversation forever Absolutely. thank you guys everyone so thank much for all. such a beautiful thank day you guys. thank you for a beautiful book and for always thank being for so sharing open and, it this yeah. conversation thank you Thank you for thank your light. You. Oh yeah. my gosh. And thank you for showing us our own lights. Yeah, and right. thank you guys for being a, a new community for me. Lighting the way for generations of girls to come. Thank you all. Can we just talk about what that meant to all of us? Oh, wow. Everything. Because is she just not like a magical Unicorn I know. walking the earth. <laughs> a light. Yeah, I just, she's, she's a light. She's a light. Yes. yes. Like, I just knew I was going to learn so much today. Yes. You did? Did mm -hmm. you? What, of what, do you? what do you think is With the... so many powerful, strong women in the room, I just knew that I was going to take something away that was going to help me in life. What was mm -hmm. the biggest one, the biggest takeaway, you think? I think for me, it was the balance between um, like setting my boundaries, but then also remembering like it's not my problem how you take my boundaries mm -hmm. like i need to be able to respect my boundaries that i set for myself mm -hmm. what about you i know you had a good some good takeaway from that Whew, there was a lot i love that you shared so much by the way Thank i don't you. know i just felt that moment with you and it was so sweet the way she kept touching your, your <laughs> like oh, it's yes. like you were it felt very motherly it felt yeah. so motherly which i appreciated um i'm just I think I'm relearning how to be vulnerable in a different way, and we're constantly learning. But, you know, you guys have made me comfortable, and you have now been a part of my process of just being confident in my voice and my feelings and, um, yeah, having that sense of community and being open to it. Like, this was a very open, literally and metaphorically, mm -hmm. like, it was an open conversation, and I'm now taking that into the world, you know, and mm. just approaching everything with an open heart, an open mind, and n not being afraid, mm -hmm. and, and trusting myself, that mm -hmm. I have enough, I have enough tools, yeah. you know, and all these experiences have made me, yeah, just capable. Mm -hmm. I hope this doesn't put any pressure, but I'm excited to hear and see how that translates in your art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. when you are like that, it just does something different to you. You go in the studio with a different kind of something. Yeah. You know, or into any space and inspire people in it. That's why I say your art. That's what I said to her too. I said, yeah. you think that this moment meant something to you, but what she doesn't even realize it that somebody who doesn't have her platform or yeah. doesn't necessarily have the tools 
to communicate it the way she communicated it so beautifully, is yeah. will sit home and connect to that so deeply and feel seen. Yeah. Because they, you know, they feel what you feel. But they, you guys that. help me feel that way. Yeah. I feel seen. Thank you for today. trusting the space. That's so awesome. That's so sweet. Yeah. I know you love Mrs. Obama. I do. She's gone, so we will call her Mrs. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> She was very adamant to about Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> she kept moving, but mine is definitely, you know, my kids are not my friends. That's what you learned from her? <laughs> I, I've literally been going through this, like I was just telling Gabby, like the for at least like two weeks now, because if I hurt their feelings, like, or like, you know, this is the motherhood. Yeah. You know, you still want to be that cool mom. And for me, I'm just like learning the balance. But she's like, no, you are not. I was like N O T, their friend. Yeah. So that's, that's good. a big That was one. a good takeaway. It was perfect. What was really amazing for me is that I think we all have those vulnerable moments where we really need to vent and get out. You know, when you don't want to go high. When you don't want to go high. <laughs> you know, you're not in the mood to go high. And so just to hear the first lady, who's always high, yeah. to have you know just to say uh, that she's had those moments where in a safe environment, she can vent and get those things out mm -hmm. and, and go a little low because, you know, sometimes you need that. Just release. to get it out. Yeah. yeah. And, and release and that energy. Michelle yeah. Obama has low moments. Then it doesn't make me feel so bad yeah. about the times <laughs> that I call my kids and I'm like, listen, can we talk about whatever? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. That's the beautiful yeah, thing about, the mo one of the most beautiful things about her, and I don't know if I said it, I don't know if I said it to her the right way that I wanted to when she was here, but it's like, she makes everybody feel seen, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and she makes us all feel like it, and it's possible yes. and that we all have a seat at the table. That's yes. right. Yeah. Like, she makes us all feel like that. And so, heard as well. And heard, yeah. but that we deserve. Like, right. like yes. you are supposed to be here. You are supposed to be here. You are supposed, yeah. Like, we're all, yes. whoever. The, everybody in the room is supposed to be here. Yeah. And I think that has been her legacy. Yes. I think that's why I tried to share that story about my girlfriends having this access. And by the way, the things they were telling me that she was having conversations was like, personal, real, like, wild personal yeah. stuff. And yeah. the, the fact that she was able to just connect with people so deeply while she's the first lady of the United States. Yeah. Right. And then just to carry that, she just, she's like this light. Yes. And this the beacon light. of light that makes us all feel like we could be the best versions of ourselves. Right. Absolutely. And I love when she said to come from different backgrounds and, yeah. and be able to have that because I think that sometimes we forget that. Mm -hmm. I think that you forget it. And sometimes it's at the most inopportune moments. Mm -hmm. So when you are able to have that information and move forward and knowing the light that you carry, you're able to actually possibly ignite somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that in particular, for sure. I'm excited about this book for her, of course for her, it's a New York Times bestseller, <laughs> but it's more so right. how she wants to so freely give this knowledge to everyone it's like else. A, it's an offering. It is an yeah. offering. Mm -hmm. It is hey, an offering. And you know something else I, I didn't get to say that really struck me was when she said, we all have it in us at a young age, mm -hmm. because I went to a Catholic school that my mother was bartering for me to go to, and I didn't know it, but I always felt like I didn't belong, and the nuns were always saying, well, you don't really belong here, and if you only knew, and that kind of thing. Mm. But I fought them at five. You know, I became a warrior because I was like, I'm not going to let that in. Um, and we do have it inside of us. Mm -hmm. So even though you might have all these insecurities, and I've had many, you have this fighter spirit in you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she recognized that, um, in everyone, you know, mm -hmm. that they got that little fighter voice, and so you just need to find it. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like that really stood out to me as well. Yeah. It reminds me of my grandmother always told me when I was a little kid, she took me into school and someone asked, what's that on your face? And she said, I took them by the chin and I said, child, it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> and that always reminds me to like go back to whenever I am feeling insecure, right. whenever I am feeling sad or low, that like that person is in me still, that little girl who had that confidence to be so to say strong, that. to say that. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I got to fight for her because yeah. she was strong. Why am yes. I not? Mm -hmm. How lucky are we? We are the I good, mean, great. 
Yes, the, the exactly. Yo, I you know I was going to say that. Wait, because I saw say you go. It. No, I we both it. had this moment of thinking the same thing when she said um, something along the lines of not allowing great to be the enemy of good. Mm, that's right. And I thought that was so it's deep. True. Because I like, saw how that hit you. Yeah, yeah it was said. Bible. Yeah. Like it, it should be in the Bible. It really should <laughs> because I feel like especially in you know being an artist, being a creative, mm -hmm. everybody's like everybody wants to be Beyonce. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like why not just be the next Yourself. you? Yeah, and exactly. and I have always, you know, I, I'm so blessed that my parents and everybody around me, you know, encouraged me and gave me the confidence since I was a little girl. You're going to be great. Mm -hmm. But I spend so much time trying to be great and and fighting to be great and wanting to be great that I if I'm not great Oh, what am I? Yes. You know, and I feel that. I feel that, and I'm like, am I good enough? Right. So you can't allow the enemy. Right. You know, Ooh, you can't allow bar, great bar, bar. to be the enemy of good. Yes, that's and right. enjoying the journey to great, even if, like, yep. you know what I mean, you still finding your feet in it. Because the truth is, is you don't know how long that journey is going to take. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you got to enjoy each process to great. And, and great can look so far away, but it's mm -hmm. actually not. Yeah, but if, you only, you're taking if you're only comfortable in great, yes, that right. means you're going to be uncomfortable at all the exactly. phases yes. before that. Yes. And that's not a great, and that's a not a good way to live life. Yeah. Yeah. You exactly. can't be great at everything. Everything. Yeah, no, right. You know, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. You know. yeah. We learned so much from Michelle yes, Obama. We did. <laughs> we did. The, the Bible of Michelle. The Bible of Michelle Obama. <laughs> what Michelle. would Michelle Obama do? I'm <laughs> saying WWMD. WWMD. Make a bracelet. Make, make the bracelet, those, Kelly. The, the book. Oh, <laughs> the next book needs to come with those bracelets. Man. <laughs> That's right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Thank Andrew, you. for, for leading Thank this you. incredible yes. panel. Thank you.